Hello and welcome to NBC Anywhere. We are excited that you have joined us this morning and hope that you were blessed by the worship and the message today. Our prayer is that you are refreshed by this experience, that you are encouraged, and that you experience Jesus in a profound way. Please interact with us during the service. If you're joining us on Facebook, you can always leave comments and ask for prayer in the comments section. If you're joining us at mynorthview.online.church, you can interact in the chat and click the button such as prayer to interact directly with someone today. In either place, do us a favor, share this service with your friends right now. Go ahead, click the share button and ask someone to join you in worship. This is your space to interact with the God who created the universe and everything in it and to join in community for worship. So sit back, grab a cup of coffee, and let's worship together. Let me pray as we start this service. Father in heaven, the creator of the universe, you are all-knowing, all-powerful. Lord, as we gather here online to worship you, you know the name of every single person who is watching this service right now. Whether they're watching it live or watching it back later, Lord, you know the name of that person. So Father, we pray that they will experience you today in a profound way. We pray that you will fill the space that they're in with the presence of the Holy Spirit. God, that they may encounter Jesus Christ today. Lord, for each of those watching this service, we pray for those who are hurting right now, who are struggling with financial issues or health issues or relationship issues or, or whatever it may be. Lord, we lift them up to you. We ask you to work in each and every situation. And Father, that they may experience your love and your presence. And Lord, that they know that you know them. Lord, as we worship over these next few moments, I pray, God, that the, the words of these songs that we sing, Lord, that they are true and honest and that we worship you without any distractions. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. When darkness tries to roll over my bones When sorrow comes to steal the joy I own When brokenness and pain is all I know I won't be shaken, I won't be shaken My fear doesn't stand a chance when I stand in your love My fear doesn't stand a chance when I stand in your love My fear doesn't stand a chance when I stand in to hide 
Today, as we continue in our catechism together that we've been working on for the last couple of weeks, and we're going to go through this for the remainder of 2021, today's question is this. If you would read along with me on your screen, how many persons are there in God? Now, the answer to that question, as we read that, I ask you, if you're joining us, um, watching us online, read this aloud as it pops up on your screen with me. There are three persons in the one true and living God, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. They are the same in substance, equal in power and glory. Now, the scripture that goes along with that today is 2 Corinthians chapter 13, verse 14. The grace of the Lord Jesus and the love of God and the fellowship of the Holy Spirit be with you all. God, today we ask you to hear our prayers. We ask for healing. In a day where we are so connected to the world, set us apart. In a time of great unrest and uncertainty, we ask for holiness. So search our hearts, renew our minds, and help us love like you love us. Make us holy. Use us to do your will on this earth. God, today we ask that you would restore us. Gather up the bits and pieces of our souls and mend them with your loving hand. Search out those parts that we try to hide from you. Today, God, we invite you in. Our faith is in Jesus Christ. We trust you. May we be set apart for you. May we be holy.
Have you ever watched one of those behind the making of documentary type shows? Uh, you know, where it goes behind the scenes of a, a movie or maybe it goes behind the scenes of a television show and kind of shows you how it all works out. Uh, just recently, I watched uh, an, a reunion show of that old 90s sitcom, The Fresh Prince of Bel-Air. One of the greatest shows, in my opinion, that's ever been on television. They showed... During the making of this, they showed a table read um, from early on in the show's history. Now, a table read is exactly what, you, what it sounds like, exactly what you may think it is. It's all the actors, all the cast sitting around the table reading the script. Now, the lines that, that they said were funny, but they didn't really have the same impact as when they're acting them out for the screen. They were just sitting around reading their parts. There was no uh, way you could see how it was really going to play out. Now, think about that. Think about how big of a role that the body plays in communicating. You can tell someone you love them, but a hug goes much further. When you see someone salute a soldier, you get this sense of respect that they have for that soldier or for a world leader. When you're at a, a ball game and you're standing and cheering, that can swing the momentum as the players see the crowd standing up and getting excited. But when the crowd stays seated and quiet, the game, well, it loses all of its energy. Now think about it. When you don't hug, that doesn't mean you don't love that person. When you don't salute, it doesn't mean that you're not respectful of that person. And when you don't cheer, it doesn't mean you're not rooting on your team. But body language and posture mean something. It's interesting that it doesn't just affect the other person. Our body language affects us as well. There's a behavioral Dutch behavioral scientist named Eric Pepper. And he has done some extensive research into this area as well. And he regularly, regularly makes participants in his classes stand up and stretch for similar reasons as to why exercise has been linked to happiness. Now, here are 
four or three fascinating things that happened once our posture changes. Example, when we sit up straight, we are more likely to remember positive memories or think of something positive in general according to this experiment. Another insight that he had was that if we skip during breaks, we can significantly increase our energy levels. While a a slow, slumped walk, on the other hand, does the exact opposite, and it drains us of our energy. The study also found that those who were the most affected by depression before the study found their energy drained more than others. So Eric Pepper is convinced that we should keep a careful eye on our posture and body language lest it bring us down without realizing it. The way that we communicate physically, our body language, our posture matters. And it matters because this is the way that God created us to be. Body language, it helps us to feel connected. Or on the other side, it can cause us to feel disconnected from people. A smile, or a hug, or even a high five, or just a wave back, an acknowledgement of someone, it can bring a sense of connection back. And as people, we long for connection. But what about our connection with God? Sometimes that connection with God and how we go about connecting with God can seem abstract. But God provided a fix. We talked about a couple of aspects of that fix the last couple of weeks. How important it is to engage in reading the Bible so that we can know God better. And how important fasting is that we take something away so that we can focus more on God. And as we close out this study of the fix, we're going to look at the ideas of prayer and worship. Now you may ask, prayer and worship together? Well, more specifically, we're going to look at how prayer is an act of worship and that it connects us with God in a very intimate way. Just like the last two weeks, today is a, an entirely practical message. We're not going to dig deep and study the concept of prayer and worship, but we're going to look at some practical things that will help us connect better with the Lord. Now, prayer at its core is a pretty simple concept. It's really simply this, having a conversation with God. So then what's the deal with all this talk of body language? Well, in 1 Corinthians, Paul is actually giving some instruction on sexual immorality. But one of the things he says applies to every aspect of our lives, including and maybe especially prayer. In 1 Corinthians chapter 6, beginning in verse 19, Paul says this, Or do you not know that your body is a temple of the Holy Spirit within you, whom you have from God? You are not your own, for you were bought with a price. So glorify God with your body. You see, the truth that our body should be used to glorify God, it doesn't just pertain to immorality or sin. It pertains to everything including prayer. The way we use our bodies during prayer is, well, it's an act of submission to the Lord. And we cannot discount how important it is to our spiritual health and to our connection with God. Let's look at what I believe are the six most prominent postures of prayer in Scripture. It's not the only postures of prayer, but... They seem to be the most prominent. And as we look at these, we have to realize something real quick. These postures are not a requirement. It's not a 
direction that God gives us, pray this way. We can speak to the Lord at any time and in any position. But at the same time, we cannot deny that posture means something. And that's why I believe that we see these different postures, these different body languages with prayer all throughout the Bible. Now, the first one that we're going to mention is maybe the most prominent for most of us. It's sitting. Now, as Baptists, we are really good at this one. It's how we sit, tend to pray most of the time, I believe. Sometimes this posture of sitting, it comes out of convenience. Sometimes this posture comes out of laziness because we just don't want to do anything else. Sometimes it's just because we're refusing to submit to God in prayer. But when we are sitting in submission, sitting is shown in Scripture. It's, it's a position of authority. As we sit and we're submitted, we are also acknowledging that we are in communion with the Lord, that, that He is, we are in a position with Christ in heaven. We see this in Ephesians chapter 2, verses 4 through 7. But God, being rich in mercy because of the great love with which He loved us, even when we were dead in our trespasses, made us alive together with Christ. By grace you have been saved and raised up with Him and seated us with Him in the heavenly places in Christ Jesus so that in the coming ages He might show the immeasurable riches of His grace and kindness toward us in Christ. Seating, sitting during prayer is an acknowledgement of that position. And we may not think of it when we do that, but when we focus on that, when we're submitting to God, really truly submitting in prayer, it's acknowledging that we are in a position of salvation with Jesus Christ and our place in heaven is already Secured. The next posture that that I want to point out from Scripture is kneeling or bowing. Now, this is perhaps the second most common posture of prayer among us. We look at it though and we say, well, if we're kneeling or we're bowing, we're really getting serious in prayer right now. You know, to bow is a physical expression of honor and allegiance, that action of bowing, which is usually associated with worship. But even just the bowing of our heads communicates to our mind that we're addressing the one to whom we've pledged our complete loyalty. Many other biblical references speak of dropping to our knees in prayer. Now, while sitting was a position of authority, kneeling is a position of humility before the Lord. Even kings kneeled before God. We see this in 1 Kings chapter 8, beginning in verse 54. Now, as Solomon, King Solomon, finished offering all this prayer and plea to the Lord, he arose from before the altar of the Lord where he had knelt with his hands outstretched toward heaven. And he stood and blessed all the assembly of Israel with a loud voice saying, Blessed be the Lord who has given rest to his people Israel, according to all that he promised. Not one word has failed all his good promises which he spoke by Moses his servant. Now, practically speaking, kneeling down to do anything can be an uncomfortable position. It's not the most desired position. When we pray, we have the freedom to pray in any position, whether we're comfortable sitting down, whether we're driving the car, even while we're standing in the kitchen cooking. But when we practice kneeling in prayer or during worship, we're making an effort to sacrifice our comfort level. Now, it may not be a huge sacrifice. But submitting our body into an uncomfortable position to pray, well, it can remind us of the importance of prayer. And it can actually keep us from distraction. 
The third posture that I want to mention today is standing. Now, standing, sometimes we think of standing for prayer as just a matter of practicality. If you're in church and we've just finished singing a song, you're typically already standing. So we pray. But standing is actually a biblical posture of prayer. You see, standing is a way of of honoring the presence of another and of giving them your full attention. Think of when you're at a wedding and the bride begins to walk the aisle, we stand in honor of the bride because she is the one who is being honored that day. Or say you're at an event and there's a guest of honor who comes in, we will typically stand for that guest of honor. Or maybe it's a world leader or a military leader. We stand for them to show them honor. Standing, that's what it does. It shows that you are honoring them. You know, it's the same way with the Lord. We stand to show Him honor. Stand before the majesty of God. One example that we see of that in Scripture is in the book of Nehemiah, chapter 9. It says this, Stand up and bless the Lord your God from everything Everlasting to everlasting. Blessed be your glorious name, which is exalted above all blessing and praise. So we have sitting, we have bowing and kneeling, and we have standing. The next one on the list is uplifted eyes. Now, now wait just a second. You've got to close your eyes to pray, right? You know, Closing our eyes, it is a good way of limiting some distractions that are around us. And it helps us to maintain focus in prayer. But a common biblical expression was lifting our eyes toward heaven. Like when Jesus raised his eyes before praying at the tomb of Lazarus. In John chapter 11, It says, so they took away the stone and Jesus lifted up his eyes and said, Father, I thank you that you've heard me. Looking up to heaven with open eyes, well, it draws our attention from earthly to heavenly realities. We're not alone. God is watching us. The life, this life, is not all that there is. Helps us to think on eternity. In Psalm 123, the first two verses say, To you I lift up my eyes, O you who are enthroned in the heavens. Behold, as the eyes of servants look to the hand of their master, as the eyes of the maidservant in the hand of her mistress. So our eyes look to the Lord our God till He has mercy upon us. Praying with our eyes open, seeking, looking up towards heaven, it may be a little bit uncomfortable, but it is completely biblical. Another posture that we see here is that of outstretched arms. Now, this is when the Baptists start to get uncomfortable. This, well, this is a little too Pentecostal for Baptists, right? But it's raising your hands to heaven in prayer, and it's biblical. You know, folding them in front of us is how many of us pray, but that's never mentioned in the Bible. Outstretching your arms to heaven, raising your hands to the Lord, that is mentioned over and over again. We see it in Psalm 141. Let my prayer be counted as incense before you and the lifting up of my hands as the evening sacrifice. Then we can look in Psalm chapter 63. So I will bless you as long as I live in your name. I will lift up my hands. 1 Timothy 2.8 I desire then that in every place the men should pray, lifting holy hands without anger or quarreling. Lifting hands or outstretched arms. It's typically associated with singing. We see in churches as we worship through, through singing, people raising their hands. 
But in reality, we have to remember that singing songs, that's actually an act of prayer in worship. We are singing those words in prayer to our Savior. The sixth position that I want to mention today, and this one is one that maybe makes people feel a little weird until they do it, is to be prostrate. To be laying down with your face to the ground. Now, some of you, if you walked into a church service and and there were people lying prostrate with their face to the ground praying, that would be a little uncomfortable and you'd probably turn around and walk out. But lying face down or, or bowing low to the earth, it reminds us what we're created from. The dust of the earth. And to the dust we will return. To be prostrate, it may be the most extreme posture of submission that we've discussed. And it's obedient worship. We find this posture of being prostrate all throughout the Bible. Just a few examples. In the very first book of the Bible, in Genesis, we see an example in chapter 17 Abram fell face down on the ground, and then God spoke to him. In Nehemiah chapter 8, then they bowed down and worshiped the Lord with their faces to the ground. In 2 Chronicles chapter 20, then King Jehoshaphat bowed low with his face to the ground. And all the people of Judah and Jerusalem did the same, worshiping the Lord. We see up in in the New Testament, in Luke chapter 5, when the man saw Jesus, he bowed with his face to the ground. It's an uncomfortable position, but it's a position of submission. And it can change the way you're interacting with God. You see, all of these things are positions to some extent of submission. Because Changing our body posture, well, it's just not that comfortable. It's not the way we want to do things. But submission in our posture, it indicates submission in our souls. God has created us in a way that it only shows submission, not only shows submission physically, it affects our souls spiritually. It changes the way we're interacting with God. It makes makes it less about us and more about Him, and He blesses us through that. You see, here's the thing. Prayer is an act of worship, and worship is an act of submission. You have to get uncomfortable. And when we refuse to move in prayer... We're playing into the hands of the enemy. C.S. Lewis, one of the greatest Christian authors of all time, wrote some of our beloved classics like The Lion, the Witch, and the Wardrobe. He also wrote some spiritual books such as The Screwtape Letters. And in The Screwtape Letters, the senior demon says this, One of their poets, Coleridge, has recorded that he did not pray with moving lips, and bended knees, but merely composed his spirit to love and indulged a sense of supplication. That is exactly the sort of prayer we want. They can be persuaded that the bodily position makes no difference to their prayers, for they constantly forget that they are animals and that whatever their bodies do affects their souls. For the most part, Most of us, if we're honest, we don't really submit in prayer. We don't get uncomfortable with our body positions in prayer. And it's not required, but that doesn't make it less important. Body posture in prayer, it matters. Just like body language in a conversation matters. Let me give you a couple of examples really quick. 
When I was in my 20s, I joined a, a prayer group of men with my pastor at the time. And I was, you know, I was young in the faith. I had not really grown a lot in my faith, and I was beginning to explore my call to ministry. And we're praying one afternoon in his office, and my pastor lays down prostrate on the ground. And I thought, what in the world is going on? I asked him about that, and he explained to me what the whole idea was. And yes, I had read that in Scripture, but I had never experienced praying in a prostate, prostrate, <laughs> prostate, prostrate position before. Here's the thing, though. I tried it. And when I laid with my face to the ground, it's a weird thing that happens where I just felt fully connected to God in that space. It's an extreme position of submission. Second example I want to share with you. About 10 years ago, as I was going into ministry, I was a youth pastor, and I was at my first ever student camp. We'd taken a group of students to, to a huge camp, and as the students are out doing what they do for the camp, the camp director brought all of the adult leaders in to the worship space to just have a time of prayer and worship for them. And as we're in there, we're all spread out through the auditorium. There's no one close to you. It's kind of like social distancing nowadays. We had plenty of space. And for the first time ever, I raised my hands in worship. And when I raised my hands, it instantly freed me from any distraction I had with God. It opened me up to His leading. It opened me up to feel His presence. Posture matters. Moving during prayer and getting your body into a posture of submission, it matters. Many times during our live worship services, we'll have a prayer time and I will come to the front of the auditorium and just kneel in prayer. It changes things. Submission in our posture, it indicates submission in our souls. Now, it may make you uncomfortable, but that's kind of the point with submission, isn't it? It may make you uncomfortable, but it matters. And if you want to connect more with God and do it more intimately than you ever have before, praying in a submissive posture, fasting, and digging into Scripture daily, well, that is the fix that overcomes all the ambiguity. It will change everything. Let's pray. God in heaven, as we talk about all these postures of prayer today, I pray that right now you are convicting people of our need to move during prayer. Lord, that we would show us a willingness to submit with our bodies as an indicator of submitting our souls. So, Lord, I pray that people will begin to practice these postures in their prayer life. And, Lord, we don't, I know we don't have to do this every time we pray. But, Lord, we see it in Scripture. And we see it even in scientific studies. Posture matters. And I pray, Lord, that we would seize on that and submit our, our prayers and postures to you. Amen. So I want to thank you for joining us for NVC Anywhere. Keep an eye out as we fully launch this NVC Anywhere concept on January the 31st. The NVC Anywhere Facebook page group, not our normal church page, but there is an NVC Anywhere group. That will be the hub for all the activities, at least as we launch of NBC Anywhere. 
And throughout the week, you'll have, have opportunities to not only watch and listen to a, a worship service and the weekly message, but there'll be sermon follow-ups. There'll be opportunities for you to ask questions that you may have relating to the sermon or any other topic that you want to talk about. There'll be some additional Bible studies that are rolled out through the week that you can join online in a virtual atmosphere. And it's also just a place where we can pray together, share our prayer requests, build some community online while we're not able to be in the church building, and just have some fun together. If you haven't already, jump over to the NVC Anywhere Facebook group and ask to join the group. We would love to have you as a part of that as we launch on January the 31st, and you'll be able to join in on the conversation as much or as little as you would like to. As we close this service, this time of worship, we do so with another time of worship through giving. Because we believe that honoring God by giving back a portion of what He has provided us is an act of worship. If you would like to give, or if you are a partner of NVC and you need to tithe, you can click on the Give button. Or if you're watching us on Facebook, just go over to our website, mynorthview.church, and you can click Give there. Or just do it the easy way. Take out your phone, text any amount that you'd like to give to the number 84321, and you can give digitally in that way. Thank you so much for joining us today. If you would like to speak to someone at Northview Church, please reach out to us today or at any time. And may your week be blessed. And may the light of Jesus Christ shine in your life. We will see you next week.